Hello everyone and welcome to Badan Waratah Malaysia's latest talk series for Spotlight on Sarawak, hashtag Talk Sarawak, that is T-O-K Sarawak, a six-part webinar on Sarawak's unique and diverse heritage, which kicks off today and continues until July 7th, 2022. Please do remember to sign up to listen to this wonderful, wonderfully created series of talks, which I'm certain will be most engaging on every level. Spotlight in Sarawak has been organized in conjunction with World Heritage Day and is curated by our live members, Tan Sri Leon Mogi and Puan Sri Elizabeth, with the support of leading academics and heritage specialists from Malaysia and beyond. We are extremely grateful that we are able to present this program in partnership with Petra Energy and supported by donors, Creador Foundation, Shahaya Martis, Sarawak Bahad, COPE Private Equity Sindhu and Brahad and Centric PR Sindhu and Brahad. As the president of Badam Waris and Malaysia, I have the privilege today to introduce the convener, curator, and today's moderator, Tansri Leo Mogi. Tansri Leo, with his wife, Tansri Elizabeth Mogi, have been the central force behind this program and have been great patrons and supporters of Badam Waris and Malaysia for many years. Tansri Dato Amalio Mogi studied at Otago University, New Zealand, on a Colombo Plan Scholarship, graduating with an MA in History in 1965. He has a Master's in Business Administration from Penn State University, USA. He worked in the Sarawak Civil Service before taking up a political career and was a Sarawak State Cabinet Minister in 1976 to 1977, and then a Federal Cabinet Minister from 1978 to 2004. After his retirement from politics in 2004, he served as a non-executive chairman of Tanaga, Tanaga National Bahad, a power utility company, and its group of companies until 2020. He has a deep interest in the background of the Dayak community and its progress in the modern world. He's a past president of the Dayak Chamber of Commerce and Industry, a member of the Malaysian branch of the Royal Asiatic Society, and is a life member of Badan Waris in Malaysia. He enjoys impressionist art, reading, and walking. I will now hand you over to Tanswilio Mogi to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Robert Menor Saleh of the Tun Juga Foundation, who will speak on the topic of the heritage of Sarawak's traditional longhouse. Tanswilio. Thank you, Willing, for that very warm welcome. And also, let me say hello to all who are attending this session uh, this afternoon. Um, as Willing have already mentioned, uh, we will be having six series of webinar highlighting spotlighting on Sarawak. Some of you might ask, why do we focus on Sarawak this time in relation to this, you know, World International Heritage Day? There are a few reasons for that. One of which is, of course, there are quite a number of varied cultural heritage interests in people in Sarawak, particularly among those, um, you know, indigenous communities in the state. And we thought that it would be a good idea to highlight some of these. Secondly, of course, we were trying to combine the serious, the academic with the more current thing, people's interest in food, people's interest in uh, cuisine. So some of these are included. Similarly, when we curated this thing, we also thought that it'd be useful to include certain uh, background, historical background of Sarawak uh, in, in say in the last hundred years or so. Uh, one of which is of course the role of the regatta you can see and also the weaving. So these are the reasons why we thought might be a good idea to focus on Sarawak this time. Now, the other thing that I would like to do is now is to introduce to you Dr. Robert Benoit. Dr. Robert Benoit works as a director of research at the Tunjuga Foundation. The Tunjuga Foundation was set up a few years ago, one of which was a memory of the late Tunjuga, one of the prominent leaders among the Iban community, whose lifespan and career spanned the time during the Brook period, colonial period, the British colonial period, up to Malaysia Day. And his last position was as a federal minister for Sarawak affairs 
in the Malaysian federal cabinet. And also because of the role that the Tanjuga Foundation, among one of its objectives is to preserve and to highlight the interest in Iban culture, including oral tradition and so on. And it is appropriate for us to have with us speaking on behalf uh, on uh, this afternoon, representing, not quite representing, but somebody who has a very close connection with Tunjuga Foundation. Robert, Dr. Robert Manoir is currently, as I said, the Director of Research at the Tunjuga Foundation. He obtained his bachelor's degree in mass communication in 1979 from the University of Technology Mara in Malaysia. And he has a master's degree in mass communication in, from the University of Lista in England. And in 2008, he completed his PhD in development studies from the University of Malaysia, Srawa to a UNIMAS in Kuching. Dr. Robert uh, linked in the Tunjuga Foundation has enabled him to carry out a number of research projects and activities related to the various aspects of Iban way of lives, their oral tradition, oral literature, the language, which have been extensively published and presented in numerous conferences in Malaysia and in Southeast Asia. Dr. Robert is one of the main compilers and writer for the various books published in Iban and in English by the Tunjuga Foundation. Without much further ado, um, but before I invite Dr. Robert to do his presentation, can I also remind our audience who is following us on this uh, session to send questions into the Q&A box. We will try to answer as many as we can later at the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. You can also send your questions and comments in the chat box anytime during this talk. So can I now with great pleasure, welcome Dr. Robert to do his presentation. Dr. Robert, please. Uh, good evening, Tan Sri, Dr. Ma, Leo Mungi, uh, moderator for this talk and everyone else. Thank you to Badan Warisan Malaysia for the opportunity given to me on behalf of the Tunjuga Foundation to present the talk on the heritage of Sarawak traditional language, long, uh, Longhouse. Longhouse living is not something uncommon to me because I was born, brought up and lived in Longhouse since I was young. Start the slide, please. A unique and old, oldest mode of residence in Sarawak is undeniably the traditional longhouse or Roma Panyang. So hundreds of years ago, three groups of Daya, Iban and Orang Ulu and Bedayu, migrated from Kalimantan Indonesia to Sarawak. So upon migration, these ethnic groups continue to build and live in longhouses in various parts of Sarawak until today. The Ibans, for example, can be found almost everywhere throughout Sarawak. Orang Ulu can be found in Baram and uh, Blaga. Bedayu can be found in Lundu, Bau, and Sarian areas. Beside these uh, three ethnic groups, another ethnic group, Melanau, also building and living in longhouses in the early days, they can be proud, uh, but they can be found mostly in Muka and Dalat areas. But today, the Melana community, they instead of living in the low house, they stay in the villages in the urban areas. In terms of population, based on 2000 population census in Sarawak, Iban comprise about 28.77%. Orang Ulu comprise about 5.72%. Bedayu comprise of about 7.63% of the state population. And Malana comprise of 5.32% of the state's population. Next slide, please. 
So these are the, this, the map uh, showing the distribution of longhouses of the communities in Sarawak. Next slide, please. Undeniably, Rumah Panjai in Iban Woods is a unique and oldest mode of residence for some natives in Sarawak. Two out of the four groups of natives whom I have mentioned above just now started to build and live in simple longhouses hundreds of years ago are still living in longhouse today. For this group of natives, the Iban and Orang Ulu, there are many good reasons as to why. As to why they continue to live in longhouses even through many of them, even though many of them having houses in the urban centers of Sarawak nowadays. The construction of traditional longhouse involves various considerations and planning which are related to custom and culture for the respective uh, communities in Sarawak. The all finds tradition of building longhouses, in particular wooden longhouses in Sarawak, is fast disappearing. Many traditional wooden longhouses, they are still around, have been modernized with modern materials while trying to maintain their traditional structures, which are part and parcel of the cultural heritage for the communities concerned. The main consideration while building traditional longhouses, the Sarawak longhouse shall be among the major focus of my talk this evening. Next slide, please. <clears throat> For the natives of Sarawak, in particular the Iban community, which when they wanted to build their longhouses in the past, they would look into five main considerations properly. So these are the selection of sites for a new longhouse, building materials for the traditional longhouse, construction of a traditional longhouse, structures and functions of traditional longhouse, and moving to a new uh, traditional longhouse. In this talk, I shall also be highlighting samples of traditional longhouse, traditional house facing possibilities of disappearing, samples of modern uh, longhouses, and of course the community aspects of Roma Panya or traditional longhouse. Next slide, please. The first consideration is the selection of proper site for them for the for their longhouse. In the past, the Iban were very careful in selecting suitable sites for their longhouses. They used proper auguries or buromana in Iban and adhere to their unique custom and culture. Sites chosen are normally plat land, safe distance from the water, from the river, and plat land uh, on places with empty lands for the hill rice farming and other activities for their livelihoods. So rural areas surrounded with forests where plenty of good trees and leaves for building materials, as well as wildlife and vegetation for their food supply. So most of the Iban longhouses were situated on the banks of the river, navigable by long boats, and sometimes within hailing distances of one, other, of one another for safety reasons. Next slide, please. But uh, not all the location are suitable for building a longhouse. So you can see that uh, land that is, is facing the mouth of, the, of a river believed to bring uh, luck that is not good to the longhouse community and unsafe for the, for the construction of the building uh, of the uh, longhouse by the natives and uh, especially for the Iban community. And even sites next to the graveyard or facing the graveyard may bring uh, the luck is not a good luck and unhappiness to members of that longhouse community. According to the Iban myth and belief that rich or thin thing of land is a taboo site, 
because the ban believe in the past, ghosts are believed to use that path while hunting human beings, making the longhouse not set to be occupied. It seemed to be quite funny and quite strange, but that is the belief of the Iban in the past. So land next to their former longhouse also unlucky, as Iban believed the occupants may face hardship later in their life. Next slide, please. So this is the second consideration is to look for proper building materials. It's one of the most important, actually, the consideration when we are talking about building uh, traditional longhouse for the Iban communities in the past. If we see the photo on the left, this is the Iban in the Rajang River there, in the Rajang areas. They are collecting the disabilian wood for the construction of the longhouse. So in the past, mature trees were still in abundance. However, today, there are not more, actually not much available and building a proper wooden traditional longhouse is almost impossible nowadays. So the material to be used for the construction of the, of the longhouse is, uh, for example, the, for the post of the tiang of the longhouse, uh, the, the, the natives normally they look for strong and durable wood such as billion or iron woods and required to give, which required, uh, which are required to give strength and support for the longhouse that they're going to build. Next slide, please. And this is the the photo of the billion trees. Who are not familiar with the billion trees is planted in uh, somewhere in Kuching here by 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 our, by someone. The trees growing very well. This uh, billion trees, and if it grows very high in the past, these are the trees that uh, the natives uh, cut down and to be used for the building materials. Next slide, please. And for the floor, for the floor of the main living rooms, or Gladak Kabila beside, the natives use plants made from uh, certain wood, uh, good wood, uh, tekam, kladan, and maranti in Iban. And in the early days also, the bark of the, of the trees from kladan and maranti, for example, were used also for the floor of the living room. For the floor of the open gallery or the gagarawai, some natives in the past used bamboo or bulo betong, split or split from palm, palms like pinang on or nibong, or stem of certain species of trees, anak raras. Then these are uh, being used for the floor for the open for the uh, open gallery for the uh, for the ruai. For the loop or sadau, materials used by the natives were similar to those used to make the floor of the open gallery. Uh, next slide, please. For the walls, the natives uh, used wild palm leaf in the past, where which they treated together uh, wooden planks from the tree trunks uh, of uh, Lelangai and Kabang in Iban wood. Sometimes they use bark of selected trees, such as uh, and also such as bolo, uh, bolo print, bolo betong, which they chop into small pieces, and they use it uh, for the the, the floor for the, for the wall of the, the of the longhouse. Uh, for the roofings, in the, the natives in the past they use uh, the made from the palm leaf. Uh, another type of roofing is shingles, a top singkatablian or papan. And for the drying platform, the natives use uh, normally they use pieces of billion wood because the one is very lasting, and uh, uh, if you can see from the photo there, the, that is the terrace or the drying platform. If we, you can see, we can see that the woman there, they are drying their uh, newly harvested rice paddy and they dry it in the terrace and the floor of the terrace there is the, the wood made from, uh, that is the billion wood, it's very lasting. Next please, next slide please. So the construction of the, traditional longhouse. When the actual construction of the traditional longhouse is about to be carried out, so various considerations related to custom and culture of the relative of the respective communities are being discussed or being the, decided by those people who are living in, the, uh, in that area. 
So deciding the arrangement for the different apartment of families required collective uh, decision of the longhouse committee, uh, community. So for example, the number of those apartments for each longhouse do not actually have strict limitation. If space is uh, available in that area, uh, they can add in additional unit or blocks of longhouses that can be built uh, at the same locations. Next slide, please. So the structure and functions of traditional longhouse. The principal division and structure of a family apartment in the longhouse uh, is the family units. It's spread from the interior walls of the open gallery or ROI. So the most important uh, section of each apartment is the family living room, where valued uh, property of the family is stored, also the location for cooking, eating, and other domestic tasks. At the back of the building, along the side, are stacked huge jars, tajau, bronze, gongs, and other heirloom items, indicators of wealth and status of an Iban uh, family in that uh, particular long house. The, the loop the, or the sadao is above each billy and jumping out above uh, over the ruai is which is a form of uh, garret. Here is a lot of uh, the beans put for them to store the grains grown by the family and other implements for the farming and other uh, equipment which they want to keep at the loop there. Next slide, please. So this is the structural illustration of a traditional Iban longhouse. We can see there that is the billet apartment and above the billet is the loop or the sada. Next slide, please. So the open gallery of the ruai, the door of each billet open onto the another section of the apartment known as the ruai. And ruai is a very important uh, structure of a long house because that is the place where the activity is going on, uh, where sasas as uh, celebrating festivals, making handicraft, social gathering, or processing of newly harvested paddy and more. And uh, Ruai is uh, actually is open to all, whereby even though it is belong to the individual uh, family apartment, but other members of the long house community can use the Ruai to to walk around, to visit each other. And it's really a, it's a, like a street. It's a village street whereby uh, people can walk through it without any distraction, any, I mean, uh, restriction. Uh, next slide, please. And this is the, the structural illustration of a traditional house showing the Ruai or the open gallery there. And the, above that, the front part of it is the, the terrace or the drying platform where the longhouse community can dry their things, can do a lot of things, and the various type of things that they can be done there. Next slide, please. And that is the, the one we saw just now, that the tanjo or the terrace or the drying platform. And uh, not only for drying things, but uh, tanjo or the Terrace can be used for uh, ritual activities uh, during festivals and various other uh, other I mean uh, activities that can be uh, that can be carried out at the terrace of the longhouse. And the steel or the post of a traditional Iban longhouse or the traditional longhouse of the other native Orang Ulu and Bedayu must be made from uh, ironwood or billion or at least uh, 18 or around six meters uh, above the ground. Uh, some can be I mean, lower than that, about 10 to three meters. And the, the long house of the Iban and Orang Ulu have slight variation uh, with each other. Uh, but the concept of the long house living is, I mean, quite similar. Both practice exchange of, of uh, labor of Buduro during here rice farming and many other activities. And the open galleries uh, are also used for, for, for festivals and other community gathering. And they have the similarities in that, except for the other uh, structure of the longhouse, maybe not 
as uh, much the same. Next slide, please. And you can see from the picture here, the Iban woman drying uh, newly harvested here rice paddy at the drying platform or the terrace. And what I want to show here is the, the floor of the terrace is all made from billion, billion wood. And that billion wood will be very, very lasting and can last for many, many years. Okay, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. And now uh, moving to a new law house. So this is a very important consideration uh, when building a traditional law house, when they move to a new law house. So upon completion of a new law house, members of the law house shall be uh, making arrangement to move or pinna and iban. So the, their law house chief shall call for a meeting to discuss the protocols for members of the law house when they want to move or what, what they're going to do. So the new law house chief with consultation from the elders of that uh, law house, they will be looking for a proper time to move uh, to the new law house. So normally, according to the Iban tradition, Iban Adat or Iban custom, they will be waiting for uh, the new moon, Anak Bulan, uh, the look at the sky from the terrace or the drying platform or the, or, or, or the tanyo. And when they saw, when they see the there's a new moon or Anak Bulan, and they decide to move to the new law house. So moving is uh, done in the evening. For the Iban uh, community, moving to the new law house is done in the evening uh, to avoid hearing or seeing a bad omen or borong tenak mana along the way. The women prepare ritual offerings, uh, parents kaya lapan to bring along with them. But when they reach the new law house, they again uh, make another ritual offerings to ensure that the new quarters of the law house where they are living shall be safe and blessed for their uh, safe stay in that uh, the new law house. The typical Iban rituals uh, to fence off uh, evil spirit, according to the Iban traditional belief, are uh, also carried out at the new living room. The four of the eight pole offerings, empat itik piring kali lapan, are placed at the four corners of the new law house and, and at the living room. That is the this is the, the tradition of the Iban or the culture of the Iban in the in the past. Next slide. So now I'm touching on the samples of the traditional longhouses from for the various communities in Sarawak. So the structure of the traditional longhouse of the ethnic group in Sarawak have undergone uh, changes over the years, but they still maintain some uh, cultural characteristics of the elevations of the of the longhouses. But the certain architectural structures and function of the traditional longhouse among the ethnic groups are not the same with each other. As the longhouses are built to suit their own uh, need and their own mode of living. But for the Iban community in particular, uh, there are generally three categories of uh, longhouses, namely tradi traditional longhouses uh, made from uh, wood, uh, they call it traditional wooden longhouses, and then another one is a pre-modern or hybrid traditional contemporary longhouses. And the third one is the newly constructed or contemporary longhouses or modern longhouses. Next slide, please. So this is, a, as we can see from the picture, this is a very traditional longhouse. It's a, in the, being constructed in the past. Uh, normally, you can see that these longhouses are normally located near the river bank. Uh, to make us a lot of advantages to the uh, longhouse community who are living in that longhouse. Next slide, please. And there you can see that this the terrace of the traditional longhouse in the past is used by the, the natives to dry their things there, to sleep on the paddy, and various other things that which we can see from the picture there. Next slide, please. And also that this is a drying platform or the and the opening and the open gallery uh, of the traditional house of the natives in the early days. Next slide, please. And this trad traditional law house of Benjamin Angki Kaboy, Arantok Midin Kenawit, and this law house is very, very popular to the tourists 
used to be visited by the tourists, uh, uh, used to stay in the longhouse, because their long longhouse is more than 60 doors long. And uh, they used to uh, invite or the, the, the tourists come to their house and even stay there uh, using the concept of homestay. And that longhouse is a very popular and well-known uh, among a lot of tourists and from various parts of the country and even overseas. Next slide, please. And this traditional longhouse of uh, Anyi Anarajit uh, Matop Pakus Power Beton Division, uh, 28 those traditional longhouse. And we can see that this longhouse is uh, seem to be being uh, renovated, uh, being modernized. It was a traditional house, but it, from what we can see, the structure of the open gallery, where we can see it's a very big post of the Tiang Belian there for the, uh, for the concession of the of, uh, open gallery. But the longhouse themselves uh, is look from the, the front there, being renovated uh, using modern material. So sometimes we call this one is a hybrid traditional longhouse because inside there is very modern, but uh, it's supposed to be a tra traditional longhouse. Next slide, please. Now we are looking at this, uh, this the Bedayu traditional longhouse. Most of the Bedayu traditional longhouse today are being used for tourism purposes, uh, not, for, not for them to stay. Most of the, uh, I mean, the few longhouses that are being available with the uh, Bedayu, because Bedayu nowadays, most of them are living in the campo, spread house or individual houses. So this is the Bedayu traditional house at Kampo Benuk Pedawan. Next slide, please. This is another Bedayu traditional house in Pedawan Penerisen, this uh, Kampo Anarais. This is another uh, traditional longhouse of the Bedayu, very popular for the tourists. Uh, tourists used to visit the longhouse, these longhouses, uh, this, this traditional longhouse and used to stay there and uh, this this uh, under rice uh, kampung under rice a long house there is very well known uh, among the tourists both local tourists as well as uh, tourists from outside uh, sarawak or even malaysia next slide please another uh badayo long house is kampung mungkus in sarian it's a popular place for homestay and we can see from the uh, uh, the gallery there is a lot of the tourists uh, mingling around there happily enjoying themselves uh, during the visit to this uh, uh, longhouse at Kampo Mungkos uh, in, in Serian there. Next slide, please. Another longhouse for the Bedayu community is the traditional longhouse, this Kampo Mujat Serian. This longhouse is known by the locals as Intagin, Ambu, uh, meaning lengthy longhouse. And this is still being uh, a few longhouse that is still being occupied by some of the Bedayu family. Next uh, slide, please. Another Bedayu longhouse at Kampo Mujat Serian. This longhouse is still occupied by the, the, long, the Bedayu families. They call it Antagin, Sesa in Bedayu language, meaning longhouse at the other side of the river. And next slide, please. Now we are coming to the Melanau traditional longhouse. That is not a longhouse, actually just a traditional longhouse. The, there is only one Melanau longhouse in Sarawak today, beside the one they built and the, at the Sarawak cultural village in Kuching here. So this is a, a rumah panjang, or rumah panjang Melanau at Kampung Suk in Matu. What is that? Rumah panjang Melanau Islam, Kampung Suk. Next slide, please. So this, Traditional longhouse of the Melanau is a heritage longhouse for the Melanau Islam at Kampung Suk. Uh, was constructed in the 1872. It's a very old uh, longhouse, but it's being uh, renovated. And uh, it's in initially it was only four families in this longhouse before. And then in 1888, they uh, built it again, maybe to make it into 28 those until today. And this is a heritage longhouse for the Melanau Islam at Kampung Sok, and they keep it and they maintain it properly until today. Next slide, please. Now I'm touching on a very important matter, 
related to the traditional longhouses facing possibilities of disappearing. So this is one of the main topic which I want to talk during my uh, presentation today. Before the possibilities of uh, traditional house being disappeared in the future, becoming a reality, it is indeed uh, appropriate to take steps to preserve and conserve the architecture and structures. So the Tunjuga Foundation saw this need and took the initiative to conserve and preserve the original shape, architectural design, and structures of traditional wooden longhouses. So in November 2013, the Foundation commissioned a team of architects from Denmark to carry out a survey to produce uh, a precise architecture, architecture drawings, taking records and photographs of two traditional longhouses as a sample to be conserved and preserved for future references. So the step taken on these two longhouses are to ensure that, uh, that the construction of such traditional longhouses in the future may appear in the original shape so that uh, is for the, I mean, for future references. So the final report of this survey carried out by a team of architects from the School of Architecture uh, in Denmark were completed in March 2014. Next slide, please. So this is one of the longhouse that are being surveyed by this, uh, the team of architects from Denmark. This, this is the actual picture of this uh, Dulao Longhouse, or this is, uh, belong to the Toyroma is um, Matthew Jana and uh, Adbatu Matub Dulao Serikai uh, Sarawak. So this is one of the two traditional longhouse being surveyed by a team of architects. Next slide, please. So that is the drying platform of uh, uh, the terrace of that long, traditional house of the of, uh, belong to uh, the people of Batumatub Julau. And uh, this long house in Julau was built actually in 1957, about 65 years ago. In its original form, this long house was uh, made exclusively of local hardwood, uh, which has been industri industrially processed so that columns, beams, and boards have precise dimensions. And this gives uh, the house a very clear and straight look, and for the most part of it, it's a clean, clean joint. The house is raised approximately two meters above the ground, which gives it a height over the river of over, about, uh, over 12 meters. It consists initially of four parts of cross-section, two parts of common areas, while the other two parts are private. Uh, this uh, the, the next slide, yes. That is the picture of the open gallery of that long house. Uh, from the left side, we can see that's the earlier uh, uh, gallery, the earlier Rumah Lama. And on the right, this a new one being uh, renovated, I mean, uh, being uh, repaired. Next slide, please. And this is the architectural sketch of this uh, Matthew Jana's traditional house, Abatu Matub Julau. And it look, this is how it looked like uh, when it is, uh, I mean, uh, the real house, but being uh, the sketch is uh, like that. So showing how this the traditional house look like now, this is it designs and art appearance need to be recorded and preserved for future references by the architect and by the Tunjuka Foundation. Next slide, please. And that we can see from the architectural drawing of uh, made by the, by the architects, we can see that the drying platform, open gallery, the living room at the back there, and Gajah Nusu in front there. Next slide, please. See, Gajah Nusu uh, is quite unusual to most of people. It's a three-sided structure built on the outer edge of the family porch drying platform or tanjo. The structure may be used at, as a discussion room or a guest room. And the, the right side is the end section of that longhouse. Next slide, please. Now that we are going to the second of second of the second long house are being submitted by the uh, team of the architect from Denmark. This is the Ulu Bayu traditional house. Another traditional house, uh, the, the, the long house chief is the Jimmy and Anglamai and uh, the Rimas the Bak Betong Division. Next slide, please. So this is the painting of the, that traditional, traditional house. Uh, 
the terrace of that longhouse, Ulu Bayu Rimas. This particular longhouse was moved from a mountain region and rebuilt in the region of Ulu Bayu around uh, 1927, about 95 years ago. It's a very old longhouse. Most of the structure is derived from a previous longhouse, which was demolished and relocated for the construction of the current longhouse. So last part of the structure are uh, therefore uncarved and have plenty of uh, beautiful sign of the craftsmanship that made it. Next slide, please. So this is the, the architecture sketch at the inside of the longhouse of the Ulu Bayul. And that is the open gallery of the, of the longhouse on the right. Next slide, please. Now let us see the samples of modern longhouse in Sarawak. In Sarawak today, we do have some modern longhouses, who, but they still keep uh, uh, the as aspects of the original structure of traditional longhouse in the early days. So this is the modern urban longhouse of Raymond Plain, Raymond Plain Glen uh, Sebuah, uh, Sebuah Bindulu. Uh, we can see the, that this is the from the area, a rear view of that longhouse. It's a very modern low house uh, at Glam's about in Bindulu there. Next slide, please. And this is another modern low house. Uh, belong to Mikli Ding's modern low house as Kutan Sabaw Bindulu. We can see the, the gallery looks very modern. And even the, the long house itself is, is very modern. It's uh, very unusual to see such long house uh, in the past. Next slide, please. So another modern longhouse, 52 longhouse of Robert Anand Ngumpang, Anangas Sebatu Batang Rajang, Kapit. And this longhouse is a modern longhouse, 52 doors, being constructed at the, by the river bank of the Batang Rajang in the, in, uh, in the Kapit division. Next longhouse, please. Next uh, slide, please. And this is a modern longhouse, another longhouse at this uh, Nangas Sebatu. Uh, this is the back, I mean, the front section of that longhouse just now. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. Another modern longhouse at Nangan Tawau, Batang Balik Kapit. And we can see from the picture here, the woman the, doing the activities of the weaving in the open gallery. And the, how, the, the longhouse is at Nangan Tawau, Batang Balik Kapit Division. Next slide, please. Another modern longhouse uh, of this man, Sungan, Kamidan Jaya Awe. Uh, you, uh, Saratok Betong. And this is open gallery. It's a very big uh, open gallery and it's very modern, it's very nice. And being painted with uh, these uh, Dayak designs. And uh, it's a long house that is uh, uh, made from uh, modern uh, material. Next slide, please. And there are three blocks of modern long house uh, built along the Rajang River. It's a uh, three blocks of modern laos. It's, uh, it's uh, constructed by the side of this uh, Rajang River. Next slide, please. And this is the sample of the Orang Ulu or modern long houses. So even though Orang Ulu and Iban are both living in long houses, there are some differences in the structure of the long houses. So this long house is uh, Kaya Long House at Long uh, Akka Baram, uh, Kampung Long Tebangan, uh, Sungai Akka. Next. Slide, please. It's another longhouse of the Orang Ulu Kayan, Umat Juman, modern house, Asam, Asap Bebelaga. And we can see that the gallery is very big and uh, they see the difference of the, uh, the Kayan longhouse, uh, even the traditional longhouse, they don't have uh, here, they don't have any terrace uh, outside there, except for the uh, the open uh, the open gallery there the Ruai. Next slide, please. So now I'm coming to the community aspects and the advantages of long house living. So baby walks like here rice farming can be done quite easily through concepts of uh, labo exchange or biduro or cooperation gutung royo. The long house for the iban along orang ulu, uh, though very Though not the same in terms of structure, share similar social values such as exchange of labor or buduro, 
uh, during her rice farming and other domestic uh, activities. Lots of empty spaces in the long house and the family rooms, open gallery and drying platforms uh, such, uh, could be used for uh, various activities that are uh, profitable to the long house community. Uh, there is also privacy of living as each apartment is meant normally for members of that particular long house. The sense of belonging and strong bonds of the long house has resulted in some having dual residences where they return to the long house to celebrate Gawai and other important occasions with the larger community. Next slide, please. So here you can see the two Iban elders uh, performing the Ngerandang ceremony around the ritual shrine or Ranyai at the Ruai of a traditional house during a traditional festival. Next slide, please. So another community aspects of the long house living is a gesture of hospitality. hospitality. The Ibans are renowned for being diplomatic and hospitable. Qualities deeply rooted among them uh, is that any visitor is warmly welcome to visit or to stay with us in the long house. So in most cases, visitors to the long house are invited to sit at the open gallery of the Rui of the long house chief. So the Iban welcome the visitors by offering rice wine, a tua, after the visitors have been seated. They shall also be served lunch if they have not eaten. Uh, but for the Iban culture, uh, the giving rice wine to the visitors, there's no really, really a limit. Normally we can uh, offer if the visitors are going to, I mean, willing to accept our offer of the drinking of tua. That is uh, one of our uh, culture. If visitors express their intention to spend the night at our long house, the long house chief will be ready to offer accommodation and food uh, for them. So it is customary for long house folks uh, to mingle around with the visitors and to talk whatever and before they're going to uh, bedtime, before it is a bedtime. So next slide, please. Um, the cooperation and labor exchange in the context of the Iban community. In the early days, the Ibans who are living in the long houses are known to give emphasis on the group performance and achievement which they place above individual accomplishment. So the long house committee, community in the past practiced various kinds of cooperative work to ensure that none of the families in the long house would be left behind both socially and economically. A unique form of cooperation among the long house community is Buduro. Uh, uh, level exchange system practiced in the past during farming season, mainly for the cultivation. Uh, from the picture here, we can see that this uh, the, the we call the, the the level exchange Biduro while planting here rice. We can see a group of a beautiful women there uh, doing the planting of the the here rice farming in the newly burnt uh, uh, here rice uh, farm. Next slide, please. So the leadership of Long House. So in the past, only women were elected or appointed as long house chief. Such person must be must possess outstanding uh, characters, such as being very brave. In Iban, udah boleh dengar. Udah boleh dengar means uh, is something that uh, in, in the very early days in the past, when the the I mean the the situation is not that peaceful. Uh, Iban used to go out to get something there, so they have having tattoos on the other on the upper parts of his palm that indicate that uh, that man or that Iban uh, Iban warrior to uh, so called uh, already boleh dengar. So that's why he has a uh, uh, tattoos on the upper part of his palm. Knowledgeable on bird uh, agrees to burrow uh, and aspects of pure rice farming. Only that. Uh, if the leader has that sort of qualities, it can be uh, appointed or elected as a Tuaroma for that long house. So, but today, being an egalitarian, egal, egalitarian society, even women can be appointed or selected as long house chief or Tuaroma, uh, as or Pemulu or Pemanja or even as Temengo if she is qualified for the post. So, one of the many examples. Of this is the late Temenggong Dato, Tra, Dato Sri Trazenda, who was made a Temenggong for the Kuching Division. This is the picture of the Dato, uh, Temenggong Dato uh, Sri Trazenda. Uh, next slide, please. 
So, in conclusion, traditional longhouse with wooden structure are fast disappearing nowadays. The Tunjuka Foundation has taken steps to conserve and preserve the original shape, architectural design, and structure of the traditional longhouses. Longhouse living shall continue in years to come. It will not, uh, I mean, uh, end there because uh, the natives, especially the Iban, the Orang Ulu, will be uh, living in their longhouses, even though they have houses in the town areas. Some natives keep the longhouses for tourism purposes. As I mentioned earlier in the talk, the Bedayu community, they may keep the, some of the traditional longhouse, but mainly for the tourism purposes, because the Bedayu, mostly of the Bedayu are living in the spread, I mean, individual house in the kampung. For certain ethnic group, no other cultural institution that could be identified as them if it is not the longhouse, especially for the Iban. And traditional longhouse is uh, indeed the heritage of Sarawak. See, the four group of natives in Sarawak, Iban, Orang Ulu, Bedayu, and Melana, regard their traditional house as symbol of heritage for their community and always proud of its history. The conservation value of the longhouse is both in their design and the life that live in the, in the longhouses. Longhouse living is a way of life where, where families live together across generations. The longhouse serves as a safety net uh, where no one is left alone and resources are shared among the members of the community. And for the Iban community, there can be no other cultural uh, institution in Sarawak that could be identified as Iban if it is not the longhouse. Socially, the longhouse structure, Billy, Rewai, and Tanyo reflect symbolically the Iban social organization of family, community, and others. Symbolically, a uh, microcosm of the Iban community. So once again, I sincerely thank all of you for the time you spend in attending and listening to my talk this evening. I do hope some of you have often valuable insights about longhouse living as being practiced by some natives in Sarawak today. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Robert, for that very um, enlightening presentation. Uh, there were a, a few questions that appeared in the question and answer series. Uh, some of the questions that were first um, asked subsequent to that appeared to be answered by your subsequent topic. Uh, for instance, with regard to how the chief of the Twaro Maha chosen a weather woman and uh, that type of thing. So that's already answered, whether it's patriarchal. Now, there are one or two others which I think might be worth uh, expanding, one of which I would like to get you to explain. Uh, in the past, when longhouses were built, as you said, they are all on stilts, very high ground. What would be some of the reasons for that? Would it be because uh, traditional longhouses in the past were built partly as a reason, as a way of defending uh, the community against the attack by enemies, or are there other reasons for that? So that's one question that uh, if you can uh, explain that further. The, the next question that seemed to be coming out that I saw just now might be worth asking. There seemed to be some uh, concern with uh, some question whether the long houses are gazetted as, um, you know, monument and thing like that. Uh, I, I would like to say that I don't, that, that is not the fact. Uh, long houses are still places where people live. And as, as you rightly so said, that people are living in long houses and it's part and parcel of the community sound. So can, but just if you can explain the role that defends against enemies attack as one of the reasons for building in long houses. Uh, uh, thank you, Tansari, terima kasih. And that is a very good question. So it need to be, I mean, uh, explain or uh, being to make it clear up to for some people not only 
uh, among the Iban, but uh, not only for among the people, other people, but maybe the younger group of the Iban may not understand as to why in the past when we build our longhouses, and I think I'm not talking only for the Iban community, as and also for other communities like the Malanao, the Orang Ulu and the Badayu, uh, those people uh, like us before, when we make uh, our longhouse, we used to make a, a very tall uh, tiang, no? the longhouse. That is uh, a few reasons for that. One, of course, is uh, to make it uh, safe to stay uh, to from the animals, uh, from the snake, whatever it is. But one of the main, I mean, reason behind that also, uh, if uh, the longhouse is tall enough, and it's easier for us to depend ourselves when the, when the the situations in the past is not uh, secure, not safe for us to stay. So when the longhouse is very tall up, it's easier to depend and to see if the enemies is coming to our longhouse, and and the uh, the members of the longhouse community can protect themselves. I mean, easier, more effectively. And especially, I heard that even the Malanao longhouse is is being constructed with a very high post, uh, tiang, tingi. Uh, and that also, I, I think, applicable to some of the Iban houses in the past, uh, where the areas uh, where the state is not safe, uh, is a uh, risk of being attacked by the enemies. This, that's, uh, I think, what, that's what I, I feel, Tanzri. Okay. Uh, the, the, the other uh, question, uh, Robert, if you can um, uh, explain it further. Somebody was asking when the billion to build the traditional longhouse of the past were cut. How did communities in those days, uh, you know, mill the, the wood to, to the right size, cut the right size? How did they try it? I mean, some of the billion posts in those days were quite big. So can you explain the process, how that was done? The Iban and uh, I think the Iban and other the natives uh, who are I mean uh, living in the longhouses, I don't uh, uh, I mean uh, to me maybe all of the natives like the Iban, the Dayu and Orang Ulu, maybe to some extent uh, the Malanao as well. I think I can probably say that all the natives are very strong people in the past. No matter how big is the billion trees, no matter how big is the other uh, woods, uh, the trees in the jungle, they can easily uh, cut it down, uh, split it into, I mean, pieces. Uh, with the even no no tinsel in the past, they have only kapa and beliong, and that shows that the iban and other natives are very strong. And they when they want to make the longhouse, they they will be. Uh, Goto Royo, a corporation uh, among the uh, Betulong. So uh, they bring this uh, billion wood from the forest uh, and uh, carry it to the near near the place where they want to construct their house and they cut it into pieces and to uh, trim it in such a way that it can be used as the building materials for the longhouse. Another question that is in right in front of me. You know, the longhouses in the past, they were built and used material surrounding the area. And the concept of this term in Iban, Pulau Galau, what is the significance of Pulau Galau in terms of building materials, in terms of making sure there's enough material available all the time for not just for building the longhouse, but also for other requirement in the longhouse itself, for making boat or whatever. Can you explain that, ma'am? Thank you, Tansuri. That is a very good question. I think uh, need to be uh, explained so that some of the our even members of our community who are not very clear about uh, the problems we are facing uh, when the, we want to, con I mean, to use some of the. Uh, the woods, uh, the good woods uh, to do, even to construct new longhouses and for other purposes. In the past, the reason why we have Pulau Galau is purposely the Galau. Purposely we preserve it, uh, that certain portion of our, say if we plant, uh, if we uh, do uh, here rice farming, the, 
at the top part of our farm, or here rice uh, farm, is always a section we call it a pulau there, pulau on the top of the, of the hill. Uh, we purposely keep it because we want that area to be uh, left behind with woods and rotans and other uh, meat, I mean, uh, plants that are useful for our living. In terms of uh, for building construction, that Pulau Galau is very, very useful because we need it if we want to have uh, this building material that is uh, from the good material, of good quality woods. And at the same time, for the Iban community, uh, we used to have uh, this uh, pulau, this, uh, just purposely reserve it so that we can have it. Uh, uh, because in the past, we make uh, boats, long boats. So certainly, we want to get uh, this uh, good quality wood to be uh, used to construct, I mean, to build a new boat. And also for other purposes, like this Pulau Galau had a lot of things there. This rotan, the other things, and even for us to, I mean, for food, huh? this uh, vegetables also in the Pulau Galau. But for the, for the sake of this uh, house construction, and certainly if all the lands are being cultivated uh, here rice farming, there's no more land available. But the, if we keep the Pulau Galau, we have Pulau Galau, so we have access to the land, access to the area, which we can use for our building material, especially for our ramo like this uh, good uh, wood there, but we have, because there's so many good quality wood, the good species of wood that it can be used as uh, our, our, our building materials. And uh, now, no matter now, of course we are living in the modern age, whereby we, our long house are being consulted with modern, uh, modern material, cements, whatnot. But certainly there are some people who want to make, uh, certainly want to uh, be proud of, to stay in uh, wooden low houses made from wood. But unfortunately, uh, this may, may not be possible nowadays. That's the reason why the Tunjuga Foundation are trying to do something to show to the world that uh, there's a need to preserve and, pro and to conserve the, this uh, traditional house, uh, wooden traditional house as a sample so that people are proud. If, if you can have, uh, I mean, such house made of wood, good wood, Good quality wood, very nice place to stay. Not only for living, but it could be uh, your uh, I mean, extra home. So you want to build using this wood, and that's mm -hmm. the reason why when we have no Pulau Galau like this, and all our land is already being, I mean, cultivated with here rice farming, whatever it is, we have no more trees available to be used as our building materials. That's what I fear, Tansi. Yeah, I see. So you know, it's part and parcel of. Um, the concept that it is quite uh, close to the environment and sensitive to the environment. Even to, when you cut for farming, you make sure you preserve certain part of the area where you deliberately preserve it so that the community could continue to have access to various material need, building material need or whatever they need in the village. Unfortunately, uh, modern days, our young people may not fully understand that, yeah, Brother Robert. Yeah. And sometimes when we look at the legality of the issue, we might not appreciate the importance of Pulau Galau, concept of Pulau Galau, in terms of, um, uh, you know, land, uh, access to land, land ownership, particularly among the native community, and the Iban in particular, the significance of Pulau Galau in that context. In legalistic term, people may not appreciate it, but in cultural and traditional term, it plays a very important role. And I'm pleased that you, you highlighted that. Thank now, you, thank you. Yeah, the, the, the other thing I want to, again, not ask directly by some question, but I could see being sort of uh, indicated by that. Uh, you, you highlighted, of course, that modern longhouse structure still retains similar traditional structure, though it is different material construction and because of the pressure uh, is that, uh, but the concept of the longhouse community is still there. I think that's the point you made. And I think that's an important point that uh, need to be understood, uh, particularly among the young people as well. Uh, though we live in a more modern longhouse structure, 
the concept of community living is there. I know I read some books, uh, some writers describe the Branda or the Ruai in the longhouse as a sort of a main street of the village. I do not agree with that description. And I don't think you would too, Robert, because the Ruai plays a much more important role than like a street. It is a place where people gather, is a place where festival are held, it is a place where community uh, gather, and it is a place where people work. This is a place where people um, perform their religious function, religious activities. So I just want to say, because I've, I've read in some books, the, the description for the Ruai is being as if it is like a street of a village. I don't think that's a correct explanation. Do you agree with me, Robert? Yeah, I agree. Sorry, sorry, uh, Tansi. I agree with you. Certainly, yeah, okay. uh, our Ruai yeah. is, uh, is uh, to us, mm. Ruai, uh, mm. for that reason, uh, even the modern longhouses, modern uh, longhouse of the Iban community, and also mm. for the Orang Ulu community, uh, because Orang Ulu and Iban are still living in longhouses. Our longhouse, no matter whether it's modern or not, we still have a proper Ruai. Uh, some, yes. you, you can see that there's a three uh, I mean the tier in the middle of the Ruai there, and uh, the structure is similar to the uh, traditional wooden longhouses. The structure of our longhouse, even how modern is the longhouse nowadays, except that the modern longhouse nowadays, because the one is also uh, in accordance with the uh, uh, the taste of the uh, our people nowadays, that uh, yes. we don't have any terrace, just uh, because we, we need the front part of the, our uh, house, the modern house, along the roadside, along the river, uh, where we can put our car, uh, our, yeah. I mean, other things there. So we don't have this terrace. Okay, Robert, the other, the other one which you didn't mention, but I just want to ask you this question. You highlighted the hospitality of longhouse people, how people could visit and just stay. But if my memory served me right, you know, we, we both grew up in a longhouse when we were young. And so we both have a bit of experience in that. I remember the occasions where longhouse are taboo for visitors. Um, and how do visitors know that a particular longhouse at a particular time, either because of what happened there, some unfortunate event, some say people died in a longhouse funeral and things like that. What would be the um, symbol that visitors would know that that particular house, long house at that particular time would not be uh, open for people to visit. That's a very good question, Tansri, because uh, to me, uh, I feel that uh, the our culture, our tradition of the Iban, no matter whether we are uh, not uh, Christian or Christian, we must stick to the tradition that we observe when we have uh, visitors, if our longhouse has somebody pass away there, uh, the Iban always mullet, see, uh, this uh, is a morn morning period, and we put the sign, normally we put the sign of uh, this uh, Benera Putih, huh? white plug, in front of our house. Uh, that indicates that uh, somebody there uh, uh, passed away, a certain period of time, about two weeks, and when visitors want to visit us, and uh, if they know, they certainly they will not just go straight inside the, the our long house. Uh, they will have to ask what is the why why you put the, the plaque there, and then we can explain to them that we are still taboo period, tempo uh, uh, so nobody can just go inside our house. But with condition, uh, with condition that the uh, some of the culture uh, indicates uh, allow. The, if uh, people want to visit, if they seriously want to go inside, they have to pay something also, uh, just a, a token fine or something like that, depending on the uh, location of the, I mean, uh, the region of the, uh, where we stay. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Robert. Uh, you, that had been a very interesting presentations, and I would like also to thank those who have followed this session. Unfortunately, um, our time is, um, coming to think and that um, I would like to thank nevertheless everyone who, for your participation and in interest. And if uh, we have not answered some of the questions that might have been presented, 
Uh, oh, yeah, there's another one here which um, uh, somebody was asking. Nearby two long houses were there a special hut for rituals. Dangkau Ampun, to save forgiveness. Do they still exist? Another one was, what are the main reasons for the disappearance of the long houses? And how did the Ogri system work? Just a very, very, very quick one, Robert, if you can just respond to those questions. I'm not very sure of the first question just now. Uh, the first question is, is there a special uh, was there a special hut, hut for rituals? They call Langkau Ampun to seek forgiveness. Do they still exist? I'm not aware of it, but um, you may be aware. In, certainly no, I, not in I, Liban society. I, I, I also do uh, I mean, but unfortunately, we, I, I yeah. have not heard about that Langkau Ampun. Yeah, we don't, we yeah. don't have that, at least not in the Liban community. Yeah. Um, Mm. I, I don't know about the other Daya communities in Thrawa. I have not yeah, heard yeah. of it. Mm. And then the, the, main, the main reason for the disappearance of their longhouses. Well, I don't think the longhouses have disappeared. Longhouses are still there. Of course, they move. They, you know, when you move in the old days, when people move from one area, and when they move to another area, of course, that old longhouse is being abandoned. And when it is abandoned, it's just abandoned like that. I mean, that's as far as I go. To Maui. Yeah, yeah, to Maui. So mm -hmm. when people move to a new place, because the area where they lived in the past, maybe 20, 25 years, uh, you know, no longer available land for farming around that area, community move. And of course, longhouse is abandoned. That yeah. would be the Maui. I think yeah. that would be my explanation to that query. It's correct. Now, the one which I would need you to help me on this, um, I hear, I read here somebody said, how did the Ogri system work? Yeah. How does it function? You, you'll be okay. able to explain that better than I can. <laughs> that question is uh, not, not that easy for me to explain, but uh, of course, uh, my, my, during my time in the early days, we also used this uh, Baburong because uh, mm -hmm. My, my family, my parents are still not, uh, I mean, converted to Christian during that time. So when we do farming, we still use Baburong. So Baburong is for the farming, for the longhouse, and for many other purposes, is part of our tradition and our culture in the past. But this Baburong also uh, is not the same, not always the same in uh, the various, uh, I mean, uh, location or region in, uh, in Sarawak here. Say for example, in certain place, it could be this. This is the how people. I mean, the, the Baburong system is like this. And another uh, another location, another division could be another uh, aspect of it. It's not the same, Tansri. We don't have much time anymore. Maybe just uh, one um, one um, you know question. Maybe more. Uh, let me see. Um, somebody here asked, does the beliefs and reasoning for making the longhouse has changed with the coming of Christianity? In other words, with the coming of Christianity, does the, uh, would the reason for having a longhouse still exist? Is that the question? Okay. Can, can I answer that? Yes, you can. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, uh, there is no connection at all. Uh, with Christianity and uh, the existence of Longhouse. Uh, the Longhouse is, is a culture uh, to the Iban and the uh, Orang Ulu because the four uh, native I mentioned just now, Orang Ulu, Iban, Bedayu, and uh, Melanau, all of these uh, four, uh, net, four groups of uh, natives are all living in the Longhouse before. But somehow the Bedayu and the Melanau, they they, I mean, they no longer live in Longhouse. It could be possibly because of the influence by this uh, civilization, uh, influence of modernity. Maybe they feel that it's more appropriate for them to uh, stay in spread houses like the Badayu. Uh, Badayu has a lot of uh, these uh, villages, mostly uh, along now is accessible by road, and they do uh, construct their house spreadly, individual house. 
and and to, not to say that they emitted other I mean the other uh, other communities in in Sarawak here, but just simply because they like it to be that way, and also for the Melanau, but for the Iban and the Orang Ulu, it's very difficult for me to uh, for anybody for that matter to to reason why they like to live in low houses. As I explained earlier just now, for the Iban community, Tansri, uh, as you know, so uh, to us we must have low houses. This is our culture and our tradition, but at the same time, at the same time, we can have as many houses, private houses, as possible if we want to in the city, in the long house, even in the long houses nowadays. When if the uh, the, the the land there is available, those who can afford to make a separate house, you know, even they have the one very long long house there. And if you can afford it, you can always build your own individual house near near, near to that long house. Uh, you can build your bungalow, you can build whatever the chalet, but near to the long house where you are. And that's the reason why uh, when, like the Tunjuka Foundation last time we did our research country uh, in Kapit, uh, whereby about uh, this urban, rural, rural urban migration uh, from in Kapit, in Cebu, and we went to Pasir Gudang in Semenanjung. I'm one of the group at uh, this uh, uh, Dr. Demap, uh, Professor Demap Nindang, then uh, Dr. Peter Kedit, myself. We went to Semenanjung. We, went, we did in Kapit, moved to some aspect to Cebu, and we went to, uh, to Johor to do our survey. Uh, there we found out that the Siban who are living in the long houses, they do make their house, they bought house because they are working in the town in the city. So they bought house in the town and the city and they, they have house there, but at the same time they have their room or their family in the long house. So during Christmas, during Gawai, uh, even no matter any time they can visit the long house, go back to the, uh, what you call it, uh, the, the community, I mean the relatives in the long house. And like myself, like you, so you have your Family in the, your long house in Vijayan, and myself also. I have family a long house in uh, Jagao there. And at times we went there, we go there to see, to visit during Christmas, during Gawai, sometime or any other time. But we have our house in Kuching, in uh, Kuala Lumpur. It's something like that. And everywhere we can find this sort of, uh, I mean, uh, is practice is always available, uh, always the same uh, to the Iban in various parts of Sarawak and Sri. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. I know there are a few questions, but I don't think we have enough time for that. I would now, uh, uh, you know, say thank you to those who have followed that. I'm sorry if- uh, Maybe uh, can see if they, want, if they still want to, to ask questions, they can even direct to me. Uh, they can yes. email or WhatsApp. I'm yes. too, too, you, too happy to, to, to have to assist. Okay, that would be very good. Well, thank you very much. You, you, you heard what Dr. Robert said. For those who may still uh, have some questions that uh, you would like to ask him directly, you can ask him directly. He would be available if you get through to the Tunjuga Foundation and either WhatsApp him or email. Uh, that would be all right. But as far as this particular session we have uh, this evening, Unfortunately, we are restricted by the time we have. But before I pass it to the um, to um, Vanessa, I would like to say thank you once again to those who have been following this session. And also, let me also highlight this one particular point that just come to my mind. You know, we're talking longhouses, but it just come to my mind. I'm being reminded in Kuching, uh, in Kuching, there is a new museum called the Borneo Cultures Museum in Kuching, newly opened, in which the cultures of the various communities, apparently the various communities in Borneo, Borneo communities and cultures, are presented in a museum gallery. And I gather it is uh, a very good presentation, very good museum. So just in closing, uh, I would like to just mentioned those who are following this session this evening who have an occasion to visit Kuching in the near future. Maybe 
I would like to suggest a worthwhile to visit the Kuching Museum, the Cultures Museum Kuching. The Tunjuga Foundation, of course, has library and also has, uh, you know, uh, places and records where people might be interested to visit. I'm sure the foundation people will be happy to, to, to meet with people interested in following those cultures. So with that, can I now uh, hand this over to Vanessa of Badan Warisa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tansri Leo, for launching Padang Warisa Malaysia's Spotlight on Sarawak series, webinar series, and for being our gracious moderator and host for today's talk. Thank you, Dr. Robert, for sharing your knowledge and providing us with fascinating insights on Sarawak's traditional you, longhouses in terms of its structure and culture. It is an interesting glimpse of the past and the present. For our audience, thank you very much for tuning in for today's first talk of our webinar series on Spotlight on Sarawak. And for all your lively comments and questions, next week on Thursday, the 28th of April, starting at 5 p.m., Dr. Valerie Marshman will give a talk on the legacy of the regatta, peacemaking in the borough. If you have not yet registered for the talk, please visit Badan Warisan Malaysia's website at badawarisan.org.my. And in the events section, you can register for next week's talk, as well as the other four talks in this series. The entire schedule is also available on our website. So after Dr. Valerie Marshman's talk, we have Sarawak's Exotic Food Heritage by Dr. Donna Drury Wee on the 19th of May. Dr. John Ting will speak on the forts of Sarawak on the 9th of June. Dr. Weilin Jihong will speak on traditional textiles and costumes on the 23rd of June. And to close the series on the 7th of July, James Yong will speak on Sarawak's endangered heritage. Next. Please follow Badan Warisan Malaysia on our website. You can subscribe to our e-newsletter Jundela Warisan or follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more information on coming events and news on heritage in Malaysia. Badan Warisan Malaysia is an independent non-government organization and we do not receive any financial support from the government. If you have enjoyed today's talk and wish to support our educational and advocacy work, please donate to, to Badan Warisan Malaysia. Details are available on the screen and we thank you very much in advance for your kind support. On behalf of Bada Warsa Malaysia, we wish to express appreciation thanks to our donors and supporters and also the team behind our Spotlight on Sarawak series. Thank you once again and enjoy your evening. Mm -hmm.